Ghostman Horror presents Asa Gregg, adapted by Mark Anthony Rains. Wolf's howl, vampire bat wings flutter silently in the wind. The ghost man raises from his slumber of the dead to bring you a tale of this is a true story, a told by Asa Gregg to a dictaphone phone. It tells of a sheer horror. It's dark and scary. I've been a night watchman for some time, but this was my latest and what turned out to be my last post was indeed a very strange tale. I should do my best to recollect it. My flashlight shone in a printed white circle and a printed glass, it said. Grey Chemical Company, MFLS, Asa Grey President, Private, in gold and black lettering. I put my hand on the knob of the door. It would normally rattle in its frame, but tonight the sound, for reasons unknown, was coming from inside. I thought to myself, this was mighty odd. I knew only Mr. Gregg and Mrs. Cuffersons carried the only keys to the office, so any intruder would have been forced to smash the lock. It could be the storage room. It's, it wondered, so I, I wondered, so I decided to put all my weight against the door. It opened hard, being a ponderous metal fitted in a cork casing. The room was airtight, fireproof, vault. As I entered, I sensed it too late. The acid fumes escaping from the vat lids that made the room haze and my throat sneer. I hurried out, coughing or wiping the tears from my eyes. Then I heard a noise, like a body groaning. This disturbed me to my bones. What was causing this phenomenon? The event. Hey, sir, I think I'm going crazy. Would the woods muttered? Asa Greg heard quite clearly. He sat still, very still in a big leather cushion chair, hardly breathing until the scrape of the witchman's feet was thinned away down the hall. He sat in darkness as not to betray himself. Anyway, it had been an hour before the watchman round brought him past the office again. Asa Greg had the at that hour, for he knew he could screw up his nut. He could screw up his nerve to use it. Asa's hands were wasted to mere hand, skin and bone. Groped his dictaphone, he flipped, managed to flip on the switch where he turned the machinery world. Faintly he found a tube and he lifted it. Mrs. Carruthers, he snapped. Then he hesitated. Surely he could trust Mrs. Mary Carruthers. He never wondered about her before. Been his secretary for a dozen years. Lately, since he couldn't look after her affairs, herself he used to, she had practically run the business. She was faulty, sensible, unbeautiful and tight-lipped. Hell, he had to trust her. Ada had then plunged his voice into the darkness. What I have to say now is intended for Mrs. Gregg's ears only. She would take the first boat home, of course. Meet the boat and bring her to the office. Since my wife knows nothing about a dictaphone, it will be necessary for you to let this record running. As soon as you have done so, leave her alone in the room. Where sh- make sure she's not interrupted for half an hour. That's all. He waited for a decent interval. The invisible needle duel peeled its thread into a revolving wet cylinder. Jeanette, muttered Asa Gregg, and hesitated again. This isn't going to be easy to say. So I did begin matter-of-factly. As you probably know, by real insurance policies are in the vault of the First National. I believe you will find all my papers in excellent order. If any questions arise, consult Mrs. Carruthers. What I have to say to you now is purely personal. I feel, my dear, that I owe you an explanation. That is... God, it came harder than he had expected. Jeanette, he started afresh. You remember the three years ago when his hospital, you were in Palm Breach at the time, I wired. There'd been an accident here at the plant. It wasn't strictly so. In fact, it is. I got it mixed up with a girl. He pulled, shivering, shivering. In the darkness, a picture of dots swam before him. The oval, the oval face framed by gleaming swells of lemon 
tinted hair, the pouring, touting scarlet lips, the eyes whose allure was intensified by violet makeup. The full length picture of her included a steam lined, full blossom, blossomed, yet detectable live body, a costly, enticing Broadway chorus orchard. As a matter of fact, that was where he found her. I don't make any excuses myself, Asa Gregg said harshly. I must, might point out that you were always in Florida or Bohemia or France. And I was a lonely man, but it wasn't just loneliness. I couldn't, couldn't seek companionship. I didn't seek companionship. I thought I was having a last bow to romance. A successful sixteen, silly. I did all the downfall things. I even wrote letters to her. Popsy, whoopsy letters. The dictaphone couldn't record the grimace. Her jerky lips. She saved them, of course. By and by, she put a price on them. Ten thousand dollars. Doc claimed that one of those filthy tabloids had offered her that much for them. And what was the poor Wilkin girl to do? She lied, I knew that. I told her to bring the letters to the office after business hours. I'd take care of her. I took care of her. All right, I shot her, Jeanette. He mopped his face with a handkerchief that was already damp. I didn't count the money, you understand. It was the things she said. After she tucked the bills into her purse. Vile things. By the way, she earned it ten times over. I joy my beastly kisses. I really loved that girl. I thought she cared for me a little. It was hate, uh, hate that maddened me. I got the gun out of my desk drawer. Asa reached through... God grade reached for the darkness for the switch. He fumbled for the bottle. It stood on the desk. His hand trembled, sp- spilling up some of the liquor into his lap. He drank from the bottle. This part of the story, he sp- he'd skip. It was horrible. Too horrible, even to think about it. He didn't want to remember how the blood poured into Dot's fur coat. How he managed to carry the body out of the office without leaking any of the blood onto the floor. He tried to forget the musty sweetness of the perfume of the dead girl, minge, mingled with the other bl- evil blood smell. Especially he didn't want to remember the frightful time he was stripping the gold rings from her fingers, a one gold tooth in her head. The horror of it coiled in the darkness about him. His own teeth rattled against his bottle. When he gulped the second drink, he snapped the switch severally. But then he, when he spoke, his voice cringed into the tube. I carried her into the storage room. I got the lid off one of the acid tanks. The acid contained an acid powerful enough to destroy anything. Said gold, in fact, that itself had to be lined with gold leaf. I knew that in 24 hours there wouldn't be a recognizable body left. A week there wasn't, there wouldn't be anything at all. No matter what the police suspected, they couldn't prove a murder charge without a dis- corpus detecti. I'd committed a perfect crime, except for one thing. I didn't realise there'd be a splash when she went to the vat. Greg laughed, not pleasantly. His wife might think I'd been a, so- a sob when she heard this record. Now you understand why I went to the hospital, he jerked. Possibly you'd call that poetic justice. Oh, God. His voice broke. Again he fumbled off the switch and mopped his he- face with damn linen. The rest? How could he explain the rest of it? He started, he spent a long minute arranging his faults. You haven't any idea, he resumed. No one has any idea of how I've been punished for the thing I did. I didn't mean a fear, sheer physical agony. For fear I took talking had talk coming out of the Eva at the hospital the fear that she had been traced my, to my office I simply hidden her rings away expecting to drop them in the, to the river or that she might have confided in her lover yes she had one or suppose a whopping big order came through the tank was emptied in the very next day I couldn't ask any questions I didn't didn't even know what was in the papers However, that part of it gradually cleared up. 
I quizzed Miss Garden Carruthers and learned that an identified female body had been fished out of the East River a few days after Dot disappeared. That's how police solved the case. I got rid of the rings. I ordered the fact left alone. The other thing began about six months ago. A spasm, spasm contorted his face. His fingers ate their grip into the dictaphone tube. Jeanette, you remember when I began to object to the radio, when I shouted at you to turn it off in the middle of the program? You thought it was ill. I worried about business. You were wrong. The thing that got me was hearing a voice. He gripped the cold cigar, chewed it. Very strange that you didn't notice it. No matter what station we dialed to, always the same voice came stealing into the room. Perhaps you did not did notice. You said once or twice, but all your those blue singers sounded alike. She was a blue singer. It was she. All right, somewhere out in the ether, reminded me. The next thing was, well, at first when I noticed it, in the office I thought Miss Carruthers had suddenly taken up the young ideas. You see, I kept smelling perfume. He smelled it now. It was like a mess of me in the dark. It isn't something, anything that Carruthers wears, he grated. Comes from, yes, the storage room. I realised that about a month ago, just after you sailed, one night I stayed late at the office. I went in there. You seemed to be the strongest round the vat. Her vat. I lifted the lid. The sweet, sickly must smell hit me like a blow in the face. That is not all. Terror stalked into this room. Asa Greg crouched in his chair, felt the weight of fear on him, like a submarine pressure. His cigar pitched to his knees, dropped to the floor. You won't believe this, Jeanette. He hammered the words like nails into the darkness in front of him. You were saying that it's impossible. I know it. That it's impossible. It's a physiological absurdity. It contradicts the laws of natural science. I saw something at the bottom of that mat. He groped for the bottom. His wife could hear a long gurgle, then a coughing grasp. The vat was nearly full of this transparent oily acid. He went on. I saw was a lot of sediment on the golden floor. There wasn't shouldn't have been any sediment. The stuff utterly dissolves animal tissue, bone, even common ores, keeps him in suspension. It didn't look like sentiment either. It looked like a heap of mould. Gave mould. I placed the lid. I spent a week convincing myself it was all impossible. I shouldn't have seen anything but assault. I went to the vat again. Silence hung in the darkness where he sucked wind in his lungs. The wind words burst, separate, yammering sh- shrieks. I looked night after night for week, hours at a time. I watched the change. Did you see a body decompose? Of course not. Neither have I. But you know, in a general way, that the process is. But it's been the exact opposite. First, I started at a heap of grey mould as it shaped itself into bones, a skeleton. I watched the coming of the hair, a yellow tangle which sprouted the bare, round skull until, oh God, the flesh began making itself before my eyes. I couldn't bear any more. I stayed away. Don't come to the office for five, didn't come to the office for five days. The tube slipped from his swiping, slick fingers painting. Asa Greg fumbled in the dark as he found it. Exhaustion, not self-control, flattered his voice. The deadly monotone. I f- tried to think a way out of it. If I could fish the corpse out of the tank, but I couldn't smuggle it out the plant alone. You know that, and so do I. Besides, what be, would be the use? Vassar couldn't kill her. Nothing can. That's why I can't have the lid cemented on. I couldn't do any couldn't do any good either. Until a few years ago, days ago, she hasn't the least, hasn't the least colour looked as white as a ghost in the back. A naked ghost because there's no way to re, re, reconstruction of her clothing. I watched her limbs grow rosy. Her lips were scarlet. Her eyes are bright. They opened yesterday. 
a breast of rising and falling. Oh, almost impeccably. But that was the last night. And tonight, I swear it, her lips moved. She muttered my name. She turned. She even, she'd been lying on her side, over onto her back. The record would be barely burned. His hand shook violently, bob, bob, bobbled the t- tube against his lip. Greg braced his elbow against the deck. She isn't dead, he choked. She's only asleep. Not very sound asleep. She's waking up. The invisible near needle quivered at its trace as it traced several noises. There was tortured breathing, the clawing of his fingernails, rattling over the desk. The drawer clicked it as it opened. A loud click was cocking of the revolver. Soon she's going to get out of the vat. Greg bleated, Jeanette, forgive me. God, forgive me. But I will not. I cannot. I do not stay here to see her then. Yeah, the, the sound of the shot brought the watchman stumbling along the corridor. He crashed against the floor door. It banged open a shower of falling frosty glass. The watchman's flashlight severed the darkness and printed its white circle on the face of Asia Gregg. He had fallen back into the chair, back with a drought of blood running from the hole in his temple. He started, stared sightlessly into the light with his eyes that were the two knolls of shrunken brown flesh like knots in a plain board. Asia Gregg was blind, and even and it had been since that night three years ago passed when acid splashed. So this is my statement, officer. A please to let me go home. At which point I gave my job up as a night watchman. I've been haunted by this day. What happened? And I'm still baffled why. The ghostman crackles and lays down, down his coffin. As the lid slowly closes, he turns and says, Don't have too many nightmares, my children.